So I am very happy that Courtney finally admitted that yes, she did steal from the JSA. Hi guys, my name is Maria Park and this is Approach to Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing Stargirl Season 1, Episode 6, entitled The Justice Society. Um, very, very good episode. Um, this was more, for me, um, a Courtney growing up episode because she's finally seeing the hell that she's been putting Pat through via her chosen team. Um, the episode starts off with basically two things happening. We get an introduction to <laughs> Lawrence um, and Paula, who are Sportsmaster and Tigress and married and crazy. Their daughter gets into a, a fight with a teammate while they're playing sports and she knocks him out and gets benched by the coach. And so they take it upon themselves to kill the coach after the game, <laughs> because why not? <laughs> I mean, that's just insane parenting. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, good intro to these two characters. Um, we also see that Courtney's coming flying back from the events of the last episode and she gets caught by Pat who's sitting in the dark in her room, which is kind of creepy. Um, and he has all of the Justice Society gear that's left over just sprawled out because he knows what she's been doing. And he tells her, you know, she's going to get somebody killed because what she doesn't understand about Pat is he has, you know, PT he has PTSD. He saw all of the members of the league killed. So, of course, that's going to affect you. So she, he doesn't want somebody who's 15 years old going through what he went through as a grown man and is still going through. Um, she's very naive, so she doesn't get it. But it wouldn't be a show if she did. <laughs> so he tells her she has to get all the gear back from, you know, Wildcat, from Dr. Midnight, and, of course, from Our Man. And first of all, Sherry knows that Rick's not going to hand it over because it belonged to his dad. So Pat said he's going to deal with him. And so she goes and she tries to get it back from Yolanda and from Beth. And they both, it's almost like timed, you know, you know, it had this like gratifying moment and like, it's, it's like, oh, well, I, you know, I, I feel like myself. And now that I'm wildcat, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then Beth's like, I don't have any friends, but now I have Chuck. Thank you so much for bringing Chuck into my life. So of course, until lunch, she has this guilt factor. And um, when she finally does ask for it back, they basically say no. Like, Yolanda's like, no, nah, I'm not giving it back. Um, Rick just walk, pretty much is like, nah, and walks away. I don't even, she doesn't even approach Rich, um, Rick about it. And Beth is like, don't take Chuck from me. So at that point, Stargirl realizes, or Courtney realizes, she's not getting this gear back. Um, then they come up with a plan because Chuck basically um, senses that the gambler is hacking into you know, this building, this defense building. And so because it's just the gambler who Chuck identifies as not having any powers, they think they can take him. Well, he doesn't realize that Sportsmaster and Tigress are both there. And this is a lesson that Courtney learns and basically how to be a leader of a team when the team doesn't listen to you. Because when they went in, they kind of had a plan, then they all just kind of did their own thing and got their butts handed to them. And if Pat had not like shown up with Stripe, who knows what would have happened, honestly. Um, but I just, I really love that moment. I love that she was like, I can't believe they didn't listen to me. Oh my gosh. And, you know, they just went, they're going to get themselves hurt and they're not doing what, you know, I told them to do, you know, it's dangerous out there. And Pat's just kind of like, uh-huh, <laughs> you know, and she finally puts it together that she is their parent. <laughs> so she, I, I, I love the fact that she's actually respecting Pat more because she also defended Pat um, originally when Rick was talking like smack about him not being very helpful um, to them. Um, She's like, you know, he does a lot. He's very cool. You know, she basically stood up for him. And I love that they're bonding, just like Barbara and Mike were bonding a lot in this episode. He had a science um, fair, and he built, like, this chocolate volcano. And he said nobody had to go, but they had all these parents there. And you could see that he really didn't mean that. And then Barbara showed up. And I'm like, that that's awesome. And they even ate it for dinner. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, the show itself is really good. It does a really good job of stressing points. But I just remember... Um, I had a viewer on my last video say that they didn't like Dr. Midnight's Beth because she just walked into you know, Courtney's room and took the goggles and she just stole and, you know, that's wrong. And that Courtney didn't do that. And I'm like, no, Courtney did too. And Courtney actually admitted to going and stealing the equipment as well. Because whenever you walk into an establishment that you did not pay for, that you don't own anything in, I don't care if the people there are alive or dead, 
You are stealing if you walk out of that establishment with that stuff. It does not belong to you. No money has passed hands. There, you don't have any right to take something. It's not claimed. It's not in your name. You are stealing. And not only are you stealing, you're giving away stolen property to other people. Just saying. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. She's just as guilty. So I can't be mad at Beth because Courtney did the same thing and it's hypocritical. So if we're going to persecute Beth for doing it, then we're going to persecute Courtney and then all of them for keeping it. That's just what it is. Um, on the villain's note, um, they need brainwave for their master plan. And I, and I, I've read Stars and Stripes, so I know exactly what they're doing. So it's interesting. I don't think they realize that Henry Jr. has his father's powers yet. When they figure that out, I think everybody's going to be screwed. Um, <laughs> but it is interesting to see all of the kids because I know in the comics, like Artemis is Tigress. So of course she's going to follow her mother. Um, Cindy Berman's just flipping evil Dragon King's daughter. And it looks like in the next episode, we're actually going to see her in her costume and with her weapon, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think that just like we're forming the JSA instead of Infinity Inc., which I still think would have been cool, um, they're also going to have the next generation of the Injustice Society. So that should be interesting. Um, a little Easter egg there. I love that Pat was talking about um, one of the most dangerous things being the Green Lantern and him saying that it, you know it's pretty much not as much of a threat without the ring. So does that mean that there is a lantern running around somewhere or there's not? Where's the ring? I really want to know. I, I'm always, <laughs> Diggle can't be in this universe because he's not on Earth 2. He's on Prime Earth and he's moving to Metropolis. So I'm hoping that we're going to have him as Jon Stewart in the new Lois and Superman or Superman and Lois, whatever the heck they're calling it series. Um, because him moving to Metropolis, that the you know, like, kind of like the coincidence in that matter is very strong. And that could be something that CW is putting on the back burner and not telling us about, like an Easter egg. They need to do something like that. Because, I mean, with Batwoman being <laughs> completely changed, not even recast, just a brand new character. I mean, the Arrowverse is, is kind of looking a little dingy right now. So I'm hoping that we do get a... Uh, that will probably revitalize my Arrowverse love because right now it's not very strong. I love Black Lightning, but they just recently were inducted into the Arrowverse through the crappiest Crisis of Infinite Earths, you know, crossover event. Um, but I still, I love Black Lightning. I love elements of the other shows. I just think that they really need to do something to kick this up because it's not really... As for, for now, I'm not excited about any of the shows coming back other than Black Lightning and the Arrowverse. It's just what it is. Um, so now that we know that they need Brainwave and they're doing, they need the satellite codes, um, the gambler was able to get them and they are all in trouble. I don't know what's going to happen from this point, but I think it almost feels like the plot is moving forward rather quickly. So um, if we're getting Cindy Berman in the next episode and the Injustice Society has already made it their mission now to figure out who these new JSA mini members are, which I mean, considering I think there's only one high school in this entire town, it's not gonna be hard to try and track them down. Plus Courtney has very noticeable hair. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I, I really feel like their identities may be uh, exposed very soon. Um, I just wonder where it's gonna, what's gonna happen from this point. One other thing I will say in this review is that I do love the Miraclo, um, the hourglass that our man carries. I love that Pat stresses the addictive you know, qualities of this device because it is very addictive. And actually it's dangerous to wear, which is why the, um, Rick's father actually put like a regulator on it to make sure that it only worked for an hour a day because he could have infinite strength but it takes such a taxing toll on the body as a matter of fact in the comics rick actually develops cancer from it so um and beth being a physician at the time because they were a lot older when they got their powers in the comics um she kept working on ways to try to counter the effects of the miracle well now that beth is not a physician i don't know how they're going to do that in this series so i would love to know what's going to happen with that but yeah, so much. Very good episode. Um, good pacing. I really believe this was more of a, a next step in growth for Courtney episode and just to really shine a light on how crazy Sportsmaster and Tigress was. But I really, really enjoyed this episode. And I will know what you guys think. So leave me a comment below and let me know.
And if you would like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on the nerd ballot, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.